What's up you donkeys? Welcome back to Rampage's comedy channel. If you donkeys compare me to Rampage one more time, I swear to Stu Unger, I'm gonna- Welcome to- Hey, if you're new here, I'm Greg from Greg Goes All In. I make poker vlogs and poker memes, so if that's what you're into, please consider dropping a sub and a like. But today, we are doing something a little bit different. <laughs> today, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make a poker vlog. And yes, I already do have a video out called How to Make a Poker Vlog, but that was really just memes poking fun at the hyper-masculinity within the craft and the game. But today, I'm doing a legitimate tutorial. Oh my lord. Oh my god. She was you just... want to be the one that edits all these 100 takes? <laughs> As I was saying, today I'm going to be doing a legitimate poker vlog tutorial because ever since I started making poker vlogs, I've been getting dozens of requests from fans and viewers uh, on a advice on how to make poker vlogs. And I remember when I first started out, I really had to figure it out on my own. There were really weren't any tutorials out there, and I really wish there was, so pay it forward. I'm being the change that I want to see in the world. So let's get more donkeys making poker vlogs in an already overly saturated, super competitive niche on YouTube. For shooting, you're going to need a phone with a decent camera and lots of storage space. You don't really need a camera. The cameras on newer phones are pretty good these days and it's good enough and also I think it's a lot more discreet which I think is an important thing to have if you're planning to do poker vlogs. For editing you're gonna need a laptop or a computer with good enough specs to handle some heavy editing. <laughs> Any desktop should be good but if you want the specific specs that I use to find a good editing laptop, uh, here it is. But as a general rule, the blockier and more gamery the laptop looks, the better. Like if the keyboard lights up multi different colors, it's probably fine. Specifically, Courtney and I use an Acer Nitro 5 and an HP Pavilion laptop. Um, and we use laptops because we travel lots. So these two were kind of on the cheaper end, like around a thousand, that's on the cheaper end. Um, and they get the job done. They're, you know, they're nothing super great, you know, the, but it gets the job done. And like for my sketches and stuff, I sometimes edit on my MacBook Air and um, that does fine, but every time I try to do a poker vlog on it, it crashes. So I'll definitely recommend a gamer, blocky, rainbow keyboard kind of laptop. Lastly, unless you have super great memory, you're gonna have to take some notes while you're at table. So notebook and pencil, and we'll get more into that in just a little bit. Okay, let's talk about the filming. Now when you film, generally you want to ask permission. For example, when I'm at a home game or when I'm <clears throat> underground, I always ask for permission. When it comes to casinos, I actually have no advice on this because I've never actually played poker at a casino because I started learning poker at the beginning of the pandemic. But my impression is that generally you still want to ask permission from the floor manager, um, but if you're discreet, you may be able to get away with it. Now the filming setup. Seat selection is actually a lot more important than you think it is. Some advice that Rampage gave to me actually was to shoot from the corners of the table. So I'm talking like seat two, three, seven, eight, just like the end, the end parts of the table. The reason for this is so that people can't easily peek at your screen. Like for example, you're sitting at the side of the table, like seat four or something, people, your camera's right here, people are gonna be able to easily look at your screen. Whereas if you're on the corner on the, and on the curve of the table, uh, people aren't seated directly next to you and can't peek at your screen. The second reason is that it gives a better view of the table, so it gets it captures the action better, which I would say is, is, is a better experience for your viewers. It also helps you when you're editing or trying to remember what the action was in case you miss something in your notes. You're able to look back at it in editing and see what happened at the table. Now, when it comes to actually setting up the camera, I found in the poker vlog universe, there are kind of two different styles. You can do the classic Brad Owen shot, which is having your phone on the felt itself and having it propped up by poker chips, something like this. Now for this, you want to ensure that the camera side is further away from the felt. It doesn't feel as squished. You can see more of what's going on. I generally find this a better shot as compared to having the camera lower down to the felt like that's Okay, but I find you capture less action and uh, it's a really squishy shot, you know? So anyway, I prefer having camera further away from the felt and like this. 
Now, another thing is depending on where you place the chips and where the camera is on the side of the chips, it affects the way you peek at your cards. So for example, when you have the camera on the left of the chips, you're going to peek at your cards sideways because that's the best way to look at them. You can peek at them like this, but you want to use the chips to your advantage. The chips here act as a cover for when you're looking at your, at your cards. Now, if the camera is on the right side of the chips, you're going to use this method. You're going to look at your, your cards straight on. And that's just, uh, that's just how the cards work, right? Because it's only, you know, like they only have the things on the, and the, the corners and the things in physics. Whatever, I don't know if that made sense. It's kind of obscure, but yeah, depending on where you place the camera on the side chips, it affects the ways you, you peek at your, at your cards, and you should use your chips to help you cover your cards as well. Rampage Poker uses the same Brad Owen style. The nice little thing that he's done with it is that I, I've noticed on his vlogs, he's added this special lens or something on his camera that I believe widens the shot, which I think is really smart because it helps capture more action and makes it easier to see your cards in the shot. Another style that's becoming a little bit more popular in the poker vlog world I'm noticing is putting your phone camera on the armrest of the poker table. This is the same style that Poker Beast uses, and I personally prefer this one because one, it makes it harder for people to peek at your cards, and again, it captures more action. The thing with this method is that you obviously can't use your poker chips to prop up your phone. So the easiest solution I found is just using a little pop socket to prop up my camera. The downside is that it's not as adjustable as a tripod, but the plus side is it's more discreet. People will often think that you're just like watching YouTube videos or Greg Goes All In videos or something. Now, when it comes to active recording, people always ask, do I record the entire session or do I just record the specific hands? And the answer is you just record the specific hand. So whenever I get a hand that I like, I just go ahead and I click the record button. It's a bit of a physical tell, but donkeys don't notice. I used to use this like Bluetooth thing from a, a selfie stick that would activate my phone to start recording. Um, and eventually I just stopped using it because it wasn't worth the hassle because donkeys don't notice. And then when the hand is done, I just stop recording and that's it. Okay, note taking. Okay, so let's go over some old notes from my old poker vlogs. So um, you'll see here I start with the position. So I wrote button 300. I have a stack of 300. And the hand I had was King Jack, King of Clubs, Jack of Diamonds. And obviously I don't write this at the beginning of the hand. I write what my actual hand is when the hand's done just so that if people know what I'm doing, they can't see what hand I have. So it uh, looks like cut off limbs. I raise to 15, the small blind calls and the cutoff calls. So it looks like we're three ways to a flop, which comes 10 jack, 8, 10 of hearts, jack of hearts, 8 of clubs. Um, and then I write the action in, in order of the, 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 the players. So check, check, I write K for check. So it looks like um, small blind checks, cutoff checks. I bet $25 here. And then it looks like the small blind check raises to 60, the cutoff folds, and I call the 60. And then nine of hearts comes and it looks like it checks through. River is the seven of clubs, small blind bet 65, and I fold. Uh, let's take a look at another hand here. Uh, oh, Jesus. Okay, looks like, uh, oh yeah, this is, the, this is the hand I misplayed on that vlog recently. So I had a stack of 580, I king king of spades, king of diamonds on the button, under the gun opens to 10, plus one calls, I re-raise to 50, big blind calls, under the gun folds and plus one calls. So with three ways of flop, which comes nine of diamonds, nine of spades, two of hearts. Checks, checks to me on the button. I bet 50, the uh, early position folds and then there's a caller, middle position calls, seven of hearts, checks through. And then the river is three of spades and checks through, villain shows sixes. That's kind of a gist of how I know take. Jonathan Little explains it probably a lot better than I do. Uh, but that's a chicken scratch that I use to edit my vlogs. Okay, let's talk about post-production. The first thing I do post-production wise is I write out my voiceover script. Every poker vlog has a voiceover. It needs a script. I'm sure there are poker vloggers that kind of just look at their notes and do the voiceover as they look at their notes, but um, I'm actually not that good at improvising. So, so I go over the hands that I want to include in the vlog, and then I make a script of those, and then I record a voiceover if it matters to you. When I record my voiceover, I use a Blue Yeti mic. These are really high quality, they're kind of expensive, hashtag thanks GG. And, um, but if you need to go a little bit lower budget, the microphone on your phone will work just fine. Next thing I do is I organize the video files. 
So I'll find where the hands that I want are and then I'll label that video file as that hand, for example, King Jack Off or something. Oh my god, did I just say King Jack Off and not Jack King Off? What the hell? Serious Greg is scary. Now comes the actual editing. I'm not gonna teach you how to edit in this video because it's honestly a lot. But I can get you pointed in the right direction. The editing softwares I have used and am most familiar with are iMovie and Premiere Pro. We exclusively use Premiere Pro now. Um, there is a subscription fee. I paid around 280 for a yearly subscription. That's Canadian. I do recommend a more legitimate editing software than iMovie because, um, you know, of all the graphics and layers that you have to do when making a poker vlog. However, I know Donkfish Poker uses iMovie, so if that's what you have available to you, maybe check out some of his videos for inspiration. Also, if you haven't checked out Dogfish Poker, do it. He's the only person doing PLO poker vlogs right now, and I think that's great. Editing does seem intimidating, but everything I learned, I learned from YouTube. So if this is something you want to do, there is a wealth of resources out there for you, and you will figure it out. But when it comes to editing, in a nutshell, what I do is I first put the voiceover in the sequence, and I edit the voiceover to take out any bloopers, and then... I put on the video files that correspond with the voiceover and I make sure that the video's actions line up with what I'm saying in the voiceover. And then I start layering on the graphics. I put in the heads up display, then we put on the graphics, the card graphics, and then we put in the positions and then the pot sizes. And then once all of that is done, I'll go over it once more just to polish up or add a little bit of finesse or my own style on things. Um, and there you go, poker vlog. But yeah, that whole process can take between like six to 12 hours. And then export and upload and bada bing bada boom, you've made your first poker vlog. So those are all my tips and tricks on how to make a poker vlog. And I hope that this helped any of you that were interested in making a poker vlog. And I know I joked about it already being an overly saturated, super competitive niche on YouTube and everyone and their donkey has a poker vlog. But I truly do believe in making the game more accessible for more people. And I think the best way to do that is to share the craft. After all, it was poker vlogs that got me into poker. Big shout out to Dad Owen, why don't you love me? I hope you enjoyed this poker vlog tutorial from Rampage's comedy channel. Stay loose, play 7 Deuce.